Hey everybody, uh, Charging Badgers here with I believe our fourth Dragon Stark here um, draft event. Uh, Ryan is busy watching some football game or some basketball game, so I am here all by my lonesome. Let's see what we have. I have Iron Shaman as my rare. Can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. It become a three-two. And when it's turned face up, you can exile the top card of the library until you uh, end of turn. You may play that card. So I guess. It's, little bit, well, it's pretty significantly worse than draw a card. Um, let's see what else we have. We have Encase in Ice, which is a good sideboard card. Um, this Qual Sisma Behemoth was actually did a lot of work for us in, I believe, our third draft. Um, Scale Guard Sentinels are also really good, though they are double green. Um, they can become a 3-4 uh, if you have a dragon card. Um, on turn two, which is absurd, but it is double green, so that would be committing us to some pretty heavy green. Um, Sandcrafter Mage doesn't look bad. Um, yeah, I think I might actually stick with the Scale Guard Sentinel. It seems like a little bit of a risky pick, but uh, actually, this guy's a three-two. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that guy. I don't want to fall into the trap of just because he's a rare, he doesn't have to be insane. All right, what do we got here? Order of Ojitai, not going to happen. Um, eh, target creature blocks. So that's kind of a 3-5 beater that can force blocks. Could be good. Uh, Deceiver, I'm not really interested. This student of Ojitai really impressed me, but I don't. I think this is a little bit too early to be picking it. Uh, Negate is probably pretty good in this format. Um... Kind of leaning towards this right now. Formidable has really impressed me so far. It doesn't seem all that hard to activate it. Um, especially, so Formidable you only need to have 8 power. And this guy comes with 3 of the 8 just on him. <coughs> um, nothing else is really jumping out at me. Uh, yeah, so I think I'm going to stick with the Lurking Arianic. Eric's? I don't even know how to pronounce that. It. So hopefully we won't play it so I don't have to try to pronounce it by myself. Okay, Cunning Breeze Dancer is one of the better um, uncommon dragons. It's not in either of our colors, but I don't feel particularly married to these. Ooh, these Airy Bowmasters are great. Um, and they're in green. I did pass that other green card early because um, I didn't want to be in green and not, or I didn't want to have to be as green as that would make me. Um... But that might be the pick here, and hopefully that just wasn't too strong of a signal. Otherwise, Elusive Spell uh, Fist was, has been pretty good for us in the past. Um, let's see. I don't see a... Uh, oh, um, the Monastery Lore Master is also pretty, looks pretty good. Um, but I think I think I kind of want to stick with this Airy Bow Masters. It's a 3-4 four for 4 if you play it just with reach uh if you just play it or you can mega morph it for six which is kind of expensive but then becomes a four five with reach which that seems really hard to beat through okay um there is the acid spear dragon uh if we want to go black that's probably one of the better uncommon dragons otherwise this beast breaker is pretty nice um or marsh well, not marsh oak uh, we've been playing a lot of dragon fodders. I'm not hugely sold on that card, and really, I don't feel like I'm getting pulled out of black all that much. Though this might be a signal that that black is open. Um, but yeah, let's just stick with the beast breaker for now. Okay. Let's see. We have an Avon Tactician, which is a nice flyer. Um, we have Naturalize is our only green card, which I'm not happy with taking right now. We could take this Sprinting War Brute. Um, he comes down dash as a 5-4, which 5-4 is a huge thing to have to deal with um, you know, when you're not expecting it. Um, yeah, so I think it's kind of between the Sprinting War Brute for me and the Avon Tactician. Um... But I'm kind of leaning towards the Sprinting War Brute. Uh, flyers are nice, but green-white doesn't really blow my skirt up. 
So let's go with the war brute. Uh, boy. Not a real great pack for us. Uh, there is, if we're looking to be red green, there is this segmented uh, Krotik, which is a five six or, uh, a six five for six. So that's just a huge amount of beef. Um, we're already pretty high up on the beef. On the other hand, I guess there's this enduring victory if we wanted to hedge into. It's not that great of a card either. Um, White might be open though. It looks like green. Let's let's just hedge with the uh, with the enduring victory. Uh, sorry, just checking out this card I haven't seen before. Um, so it has vigilance. It's a two four with vigilance for four. Add three deer mana uh, pool. Activate this only if you. So it's a ramper, but it only ramps you after you have power eight or higher. Hmm. Otherwise, we have this uh, Colgarian Aspirant, which is a 2-1, but it also deals a point of damage whenever something blocks it. Um, how much do I need? To, how much do I need to get to seven from four, versus having just another quick beater? I think we kind of are looking like we might be a quick beat down deck. Um, Deadly Wanderings. Could be interesting in the right deck. This is not that deck. Well, it could actually be this deck, but it's not. We don't have the colors for it right now. Um, so I might just pick up another Sprinting Warbrute here. This Colossidon Yearling is also not bad. Um, not really going with the beatdown deck, but a 2 4 for 3 is reasonable. Um, or we could pick up a Magnetic Chasm if we think we're going big beef. Uh, but I think let's stick with the Warbrute. Um, and we're going to have to avoid uh, many more big drops because we can only have so many of those. Um, none of these are really useful for us. However, in case an ice is the, if we're looking to be green, red is the card that hits us. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure if these, I haven't played the format enough to tell, but it really feels like these packs are underpowered. Um... Again, nothing here for us, but not really anything here for other people. Um, I'm going to grab a Glint, or uh, not to play, but just um, just because I think it could stop us if we end up with some good red removal or some of the fight cards. Um, I'll grab the shelty, er, Sheltered Airy. Uh, so Black might be open. Uh, I mean, these neither of these cards are... Actually, probably not. Um, let's grab the Sheltered Airy. Just in case we want to splash something in a later pack. Lose Calm could be playable. It's a uh, threat and effect, so we could steal a creature and, and beat in with it. But it's weird, because it costs one extra. And for that one extra, it makes it so they have to be double blocked. Um, which doesn't exactly seem like something that they're likely going to want to do. On the other hand, threat and effects are usually used to end the game. So maybe that makes it... You know, when you're using it, they're already kind of in a hard spot, usually... Um, I'm not really sure where we're going so far. Uh, I really feel like those packs have been kind of weak. I would love to see some of the things that force uh, creatures to be double blocked because we do have a lot of beef right here. Um, otherwise, there's this press the advantage, which I don't. I don't think we're going to take here, but a card like this might be nice for us. What I'm looking at is a stampeding elk herd. It is a five drop that uh, whenever it attacks, if I have five, eight or more power, uh, creatures I control gain trample until the end of turn. I have a lot of big creatures. Um, it is another five drop though. Um, and I really don't want more of those, but n these aren't that great anyways. So if I, I would happily, it, this is probably an upgrade rather than an additional playable, but I, I think it's a pretty significant upgrade. Really could use some removal. I don't think I've passed much. Yeah, so if I'm if I'm being reasonable, I don't think I'm going to have five, four or five drops. Um, 
This lurking lurking Eryx could actually be really good. Oh, um, I like this artillerist. It's a gore swine that can all. Oh, never mind. This hardened berserker is very good. Um, so with oh, and there's another uh, stampeding elk herd which I will not be playing. Um, but this hardened berserker is really nice. It it's an aggressive ramper, so it's a three two for three. But whenever it attacks, it, um, the next spell I cast costs one less to cast. So with all of these fives, if I swing with this on four and then I, I can drop a five drop, that seems great. Um, this uh, shield bearer actually also could be okay. I don't want to pick it, but when it's turned faced up, I get to put a plus one plus one counter on another creature I control. It's also just something early I can play, but it'll also ensure that I have the biggest badass on the board. Um, but yeah, otherwise this aerial list would be fine. Um, as far as other people, this spell eater is going to be annoying. It's a, it has a megamorph for five that mana leaks me. I'm sure even though I'm pointing it out right now, I'm going to forget about it and it'll get me. Um, display of dominance. Sorry, I'm just going to check this out. Oh, yep. That is not good. Uh, there's a pacifism here, which we are not that color. Um... We do have some sideboards for it, and Pacifism isn't as good in this set as it has been in past sets. This Glade Watcher actually seems pretty nice. It gives us three for Formidable right off the bat, and then we can play one green um, so and let it attack. Otherwise, it, it just has Defender. Because uh, the other option for us in our colors would be this Storm, Storm Singer, which is a 1-1 one, one haste. You never play it that way, uh, You can, but you can play it. And then megamorph it, and it becomes a two-two that gives another thing haste, which that could be a nice surprise. But I don't really think that that's as important for us as this Glade Watcher, which holds the ground early and can attack. There's also this a, a Tarka Freet that pings something when it's turned faced up, and then it becomes a six-two. Um, it's actually a pretty wow. I, I hadn't realized how efficient mana wise that is, though it does only have two toughness. Uh, well, Silk Road Quartermaster isn't that bad. Um, it's a 2-2 two, two for, uh, for 3, but you can remove counters from it to move it to other creatures. So it can, it's a 2-2 two, two for 3 that can make combat a little bit more difficult. So you're, you're losing some in efficiency, but you're gaining some in, uh, you're, you're gaining some in, in utility. Um, this Warbringer... <laughs> We could try and go deep on these sprinting war brutes. The problem is that we're red green, and only one of our colors is the dash color. Um, plus, it's a you. I, so I think you really need a huge amount of dash creatures to make this one worth it, and we just don't have that number. Um, Youthful scholar and Zephyr scribe are both really good cards, but they're both really blue. And Silengar butcher is really black, and we can't play any of those cards, which is a bummer. Um, ooh, another Hardened Berserkers. I'm kind of happy to see that. My other question, my other uh, consideration could be this Evolving Wilds here. Um, just in case we want to enable a splash. We are, we have no removal currently, um, which is really bad. So it would be nice to be able to pick up a removal even if it's off color. There's another Butcher here. Um, maybe, I mean, Black, I, I did make a note that Black was a little bit open. Uh, maybe I should have read that signal and gone into it. Um... But we're still getting some pretty decent red and green options. Um, that tread upon would be nice. Or so if we can't, I mean, removal would be the ideal. Uh, re removal would be the ideal way to f uh, to improve this deck. But if we can't get removal, tricks can do an okay job of filling in. Um, let's see. There's this is a five drop, which we don't really need. That bolsters two. Otherwise, we could use the, this Magnetic Chasm as a uh, as a finisher. The problem is it doesn't stop creatures with flying, so against certain decks, it could just be dead. Um, I still think it's worth grabbing. Uh, I don't think we want another 5-drop, and I'm not even sure that this is an upgrade over our other 5-drops, um, and nothing else is really in our colors. Uh, yeah, that's where we're at. Boy. Oh, we have a sideboard card here. Um, I kind of like these sideboard cards, actually. Uh, they, um, you know, they're not always good, but when they are good, this is a um, 
one mana spell that deals for it's a flame slash for white or blue creatures which is fine it's also an instant which i don't think flame slash was uh again <laughs> black is still there's still a lot of black here this i like this student of ojitai um a lot okay we can get another uh we can get another stampeding elk herd which would probably be an upgrade over one of these or we could get a summit prowler to get a little bit more reasonable beef or we could go with these uh scream reach brawler which i'm not terribly impressed with um i'm kind of leaning towards the prowler just because this is probably an up with this we'd probably be using this to upgrade one of these cards and the prowler is just is fine we're back to two colors red red isn't the end of the world okay obscuring ether um i don't ask a whole uh ooh. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with Obscuring Aether. Uh, it's not the most sexy card. Um, so basically it makes morphs cost one less to cast. But then you can be, turn it down into a bear. So worst case scenario, you don't have any morphs in your hand. You play it on turn one. On turn two, you turn it face down and you have a have a bear. Which isn't the end of the world. Uh, the other thing I was looking at was Volcanic Rush. Um, just as kind of a finisher um again black is still flowing and this blue is pretty good too um but i think we could actually get away with an ancestral statue um i think it's gonna be a sideboard card uh but there's um there's potential things we could do like we could use the quartermaster with it um i'll, I'll look for other synergies but it, it also gets us around um stuff like pacifism another student of ojitai and another elusive spells for this but this storm singer is okay for us we're kind of a little bit stuck between two plans right now um so okay this card i've seen gone go really late a few times it's a two one that loots for three that you can also when you uh cast a non-creature spell you can untap it so it's like a looter with upside and yes it does cost one but that still seems bizarrely powerful for it to be going this late maybe i I'm, I'm misevaluating it but or I miss a huge blue signal. Both things are extremely possible. Um, so we did pick up a few more aggressive options. Where the problem here is that we are kind of well. First of all, we don't. We still don't have any removal. Um, and then the other problem is that we have some cards. Ooh, uh, but we can't use this ability. Um, Dang. So it's a 3-2 first strike for three. With an ability that we simply can't use. Uh, which is unfortunate because the ability is amazing. Um, however, our other options would be a Gore Swine. Which is one more power, one less toughness, um, but loses first strike. So I think that even though we can never use this ability, I'm going to take... Uh, the Alicia. The other option I I saw scrolling down was um, Whisper of the Wilds, which is a ramp card. I don't think that we have so many absurd high drops that ramp is something that we want to be doing. Um, if we have a better option. Oh hey, Flame Rush Rider. So we're um, so this guy is kind of cool. Well, it's it's a very high variance card. So whenever he attacks, you put a token onto the battlefield, tap an attack, and it's a copy of another target attacking creature. And then you exile that at token at end of combat, and it has dash. So normally, it just creates a copy of one of your creatures, and then they block this and it dies. Which is fine. <laughs> like, it, you know, you know, if, even if it's a if it's a falter effect for four that's, that, that has an additional guy coming with it, like, that can that can easily be enough and sometimes they can't deal with it it's very rarely and it can just kind of take over the game uh we could actually use a team or team or battle rage here we have some big beefers um we have far too many big beefers um and it can be a good finisher or it can be a trick um to go over our, to to get past our removal gap um, there is otherwise there's not really a whole lot for us here the the war beast can be okay but we don't need more beef um, rage form is very very high variance if you hit it 
if you hit it on a creature, it's probably one of the better face-up ones, except the white one. The problem is most of the time you don't hit a face-up creature, and a 2-2 and a two -two for 4 with double strike is not a good deal at all. Um, otherwise, there's Formless Nurturing, which is kind of like... Uh, which again is a manifest card but it makes it 3-3 three, three. Um, but that one doesn't reward you as much if you do hit a creature but it's not as bad if you don't and then lastly in our colors there's collateral damage which is awful um, some good stuff for other people too uh, there's a channel harm that we can get blown out by if we don't remember it exists uh, geez there's another this is another pack with a lot of good stuff for other people that aren't me hmm Uh boy. I don't want any of these cards. Maybe I will grab... I'm just going to grab a Thornwood Falls. I doubt... None of these cards are worth splashing, and I doubt that we're going to get something worth splashing. But I seriously can't... I seriously can't see myself playing any of these other cards. Um, I mean, Sipsig, Muckdragers could... Like if we need, if we, you know, if my objective was to splash something, I guess that would be reasonable to splash just because it, it doesn't matter when you drop it. But I, I hope we didn't just, you know, get cut out of something. Uh, Rugged Highlands is fine. It fixes our mana. Um, we could also take the Smoldering or Freed or an Antioch uh, Guide. Uh, I guess we'd take the Guide over the Freed, but, um... Honestly, neither of them is that great, and I'd rather have a slightly better mana base, so. That's what we're doing. Oh, Frontier Siege. It is a siege. It is one of the worst sieges. Um, that being said... Oh, it's whenever a creature with flying enters the battlefield? I That is awful. Wow. Well, I'm excited to look back on this draft and see where I went wrong, because... I do not appear to be in the right colors. Um, I mean, Frontiers... I don't think that we even want to... Uh, I'm, I'm going to grab it, but I don't think we want, even want to play it. Like, it doesn't do anything for us, really. Oh, well, there's a Frontier Mastodon, which is okay. Or a Gorswine. Or we could continue to fix our mana. I don't know that we're going to get more playables. Um, and we currently have a naturalized counting as a playable, so I think I have to take one of these two. Um, we don't have a huge way, a huge number of ways of getting ahead, so I, uh, I'm actually still going to take the Frontier Mastodon. Um, just not dying to tokens and stuff is kind of nice. Nope, of course, fine, it is. I'm, I'm pulling an audible here. That also. It turns on formidable right away. Or not formidable. Um, but it, it, it turns on uh, uh, ferocious. Is that the one? I don't know. Uh, Destructor Dragon is a big flying dragon. It is also the only card here for us. Kind of disappointed, but I'll take it. Um. Sure. Let's look at these stone unit retainers. I don't think our deck can do it, um, but we'll look during deck building if we can just make a super aggro build. Oh, here, here's another gorse wine. Um, so that super aggro build is looking more likely. However, you we really don't have a whole lot of ways of getting things out of the way. Oh uh, boy. Um, we don't have none of these cards are particularly. None of these cards are good, and none of these cards are particularly good against us. I guess death. Touch could be annoying against us because we tend to have the bigger stuff. Um, Channel Harm can blow us out. Oh, I'll take this free. If we are going for the super aggro build, that guy will make the cut. Why couldn't you have been the Red Siege? Probably because you wouldn't have been in the pack then. Still, you were much worse than the Red Siege and you should feel but worse about it. Reconsider your life, so life choices, Frontier Siege. Okay, well, this isn't the worst deck ever, but it has some problems. Um, it definitely has some problems. 
Oh, I just started getting messages from myself. Um, wasn't really looking at chat during the, the draft, but apparently Ryan was here. All right. Can we make something aggressive here? I think we can. I don't want to get rid of too much of the power. And I think we can still use some finishers. But... Let's see. So what, what stuff is made the list is just not playable. That's playable. This isn't a great card. Um, it's actually a pretty bad card. Uh, but we are fairly red. Um, so it might be able to do some work. And it probably can trade for something at some point. And I think it honestly has a pretty good threat of activation effect. Where you attack with it. And they have to be pretty selective in what they're what they're blocking and if we are going on the I'm just going to beat face plan that guy's getting in there that guy can stay in this Irish shaman can stay in beast breakers fine we have a lot of guys with high power which is nice um, and we are very very red which again is nice. Um, I think I can actually play this uh, Stone Hue Retainers. Um, it's unlike, like, just because most of the time it is a, um, most of the time it's gonna be a five drop. Um, it could get stranded in my hand until eight, but I don't really see, I, I guess seven would be the worst reasonable scenario, which is, you know, that's, that's a bad scenario, but I think there's a good enough chance that I'll be able to do something, um, th that I'll be able to, to cast it at a reasonable time, um, that I'm going to keep it in. Uh, I think one of the decisions that you have to make is, do you want, do you, um, can you afford a consistent deck? Um, meaning, is your deck already powerful? And, or, it, it, uh, yeah, is your deck, can you, um, yeah, can you afford to have a consistent deck? And I don't think this deck can afford to be, pick the most consistent line. I think it needs to pick the most powerful line. Um, yeah, we do have... <laughs> God, I really wish we had more options for removal. Um, we do have this Magmatic Chasm to hopefully get guys out of the way for a Nova. Um, but we don't really have... <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel like we were passing a whole lot of removal, but um, we really do not have good removal options. But... You gotta play the deck you got. Let's see what Magic Online wants us to be. 10-6. Uh, so we are effectively 11-7. That makes the obscuring ether look really bad. Because you can't play it face down by itself. You need to first have a green. Um, the other guys I'm not as worried about. Even these lower drops. Because Glade Watcher doesn't really get going until after you have a few more, a, a little bit more beef on the table. Um, and Quartermaster is fine. Like, you're not playing for it for its efficiency, you're playing it for its utility. And then, yeah, Bowmaster. Bowmaster, I think, actually gets easier to cast, or easier to morph up. Yeah, so you only unmorph it for six. Um, so that's, that's not as bad. It's these... Stamp, stampeding elk herd um, which is a bit of a pain we could do this instead uh, because it's easier on our mana base but it's a much well I think it's a worse card I haven't played the format enough to really tell um, 
I think the idea would be that you play it on five and then uh and then I mean there's two modes. One would be that you just start beating face and eating their little stuff. Um or then the other would be that you can, you know, take two blockers out of the way, eat one of them hopefully, and let the other one through. That might be more on our plan. I just don't think I'm gonna throw that in, um, and take out the obscuring aether. Um, because we don't, I don't think we have, well, first of all, we don't, we aren't going to use it as an enchantment like ever. So instead it is a, it, it's almost always going to be a two, two for two that requires green. Oops. Um. Just trying to think if there's anything else I should be doing here. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to. I think we're gonna have to make this work. Twenty-one creatures would have been awesome if we got a tail slash or something. Yep, I'm not sure. I'm just not sure. But again, this is the kind of deck. I mean, this deck can steal wins. Um, it it can get out to some very aggressive starts. Um, and this battle rage is kind of a baller for this deck. Um, and yeah, we we do have. We do have a bit of power in this, um, you know, it, it, uh, in, in some of our top end stuff can come out of nowhere and deal a bunch of damage. But man, I would love to trade.